This is a 2013 F-150 EcoBoost, uh, 3.5 liter. Uh, this body series was made from 2009 to 2014, I believe. So the running gear should all be the same. There are some differences, uh, which I'm not a fully aware of all of them, so I will just cover what I know about this one. For a long time now, a number of years, it uh, presently has 230,000 kilometers on it. The turbo throws a code when we're towing this trailer, which is 6,000 pounds, with a fairly flat front, so it's not really streamlined. And if we stop after driving for a couple hours, and then start anytime within an hour, and take off again, in acceleration, it will throw a code for the turbos. Uh, P 0299 something like that I will uh, put that in the in the text so it throws a code uh, and then the boost goes down and it doesn't as soon as I reset the code uh, boost returns to normal so it would appear to be a sensor problem I've looked at the turbos the uh, wastegates work properly they're synchronized um, the sensor that's underneath did fail at one point underneath the cover here uh, that uh, controls the pulsing on the turbo wastegates. It uh, did fail at one point, but that was a hard failure and it worked. After I replaced that it worked, but we still had the, the problem of a couple hours and it would uh, throw the code again. So there's a sensor in there, see at the back there, right here, that's the manifold pressure. There's another sensor here for air intake, which is this one, that's connected to the air filter. And there's one more sensor down here, which... Uh, is pre-throttle body air pressure from the turbos. All three of those can throw that, can cause that code. Well, including the wastegate control as well. But the sensors that actually read the pressures, any of those can cause a problem. Um, Ford now wants 160 bucks for this sensor. Um, I'm not sure what they want for the, that one anymore. I think it's about the same. And the one down here used to be about twice the price. So if that's true, then we're hitting 300 bucks for that sensor. But I haven't checked that yet. Uh, this sensor would seem to me to be the one that's one of the two that are most critical for heat, which obviously if you run for two hours under load, stop, and then start again, heat is an issue. So that's or could be an issue so that's one of the things I'm concerned about but recently it threw a code that is unique to this sensor uh, P012B the wires I'll show you in a minute I've cut them now but it's a tight band here to get get to the connector so Ford now wants 140 bucks I think it is for the kit to extend this which is the connector and four wires which is terrible prices for four parts used to be reasonable I don't know what they're doing now so I will show you how I am going to try and fix what appears to be broken wires on that connector so here's the connector you can see some of the wires Looks like they're kinked, which is a uh, usually a good indication that things are breaking inside. So I've cut them all at different lengths. I have taken this one out already, and I'll show you how I did that. Take a fine flat screwdriver, and there's a blue seal there. In front of that seal is this gray shroud. It's same both directions it's not polarized in any way 
So we pop that off. Like that. And you keep track of where it went. And then these take a finer screwdriver, in this case a jeweler screwdriver, and you pull back this tab here. And then the connector will, the pin will pop back. So I'm just going to do the one at a time because I don't want to get, well, rather than taking notes, I will just do, do the connector and then um, put them back in. So I will put some, a couple inches of wire on this and put them back into place. Unfortunately, I don't have wire this fine, so it's going to be a little bit thicker. I can go smaller than that, but I can't go the same size. So I, I will try a little bit thicker to start with, see how that does. But I will open up this clamp here pull out the insulator and replace the whole wire just in case there is some breakage in there on all of them or any of them good way to poke yourself there we go. There. Off it comes. So here's so far. I took the jacket off the original wire uh, to prove whether it was broken or not and this one was in good condition so I just used the original wire I opened this up and removed the insulator and then put it back on and I used Jigaloo which is a, um, a lubricant that doesn't last it evaporates so that allowed me to put the uh, wires through this insulator and I put the insulator over top of the heat shrink. Uh, it's a lot harder when it's dry. So I've done a Western Union splice on the two pieces of wire. I will solder it. One tip, by the way, is always keep fresh solder on the tip of the soldering iron if you're leaving it running. And don't let it, if you're not using it, then turn it off. That's far better for the iron. And if you don't keep fresh solder on it, it will corrode. And then it's quite difficult to get the corrosion off and get it to work properly again. So if you're using it, keep fresh solder on it. If you're not using it, turn it off. It only takes 45 seconds for it to warm up in one of these stations. The copper, of course, is getting warm now. I have it set to 750 Fahrenheit, so I'll see. I'm going to have to turn it up a bit. There you go. A complete. The joint is completely saturated with solder, so that will never come apart. Now I'll put some more heat shrink over that. I'll crimp down the sharp edges. And I use this, by the way, to. Uh, reattach the insulator and crimp the metal here um, using this rounded one. Here's the completed connector. Just got a couple more inches for each wire. I'll go put this in the truck now. Bad news is all the wires were good. So it's probably a sensor. The air filter is good, which is the other possible cause, or a CPU on the truck. So, sensor is the next most likely thing, although I would hate it to be the CPU. And there's the finished product. A lot less stress on the wires. 
Too bad that won't fix the problem. So on to the next step. But that's how you repair one of those connectors and save yourself a hundred bucks. This tape here is excellent if you have to do any automotive wiring. It's a cloth wire tape. This one made by Tessa. I got it at an automotive uh, restoration supplier. I'm sure there are other places to get it, but that's it. I want to thank you for watching through to the end. I hope you have enjoyed the, this video and any of the other ones that you have seen. And I have a favor to ask. The way YouTube works and other uh, social media, if I don't have likes and dingy bells, then uh, I get ignored. So it's getting harder and harder to find my channel when I do searches to check on how it's going. So if you could subscribe or hit the little dingy bell, that would be wonderful. That would help me a lot. If you think there, you have some friends who might enjoy this series, I ask you to let them know. Uh, the more that uh, YouTube and Rumble, etc. see favorites and people who are watching, the more they recommend it. It's getting so that when I even search my channel with the exact name, I end up down the list and they're putting other sites before this one. So if you can help out in that way, I would sincerely appreciate it. Uh, to this point, in the six months or so that I've been doing these videos, I've received one comment, uh, which tells me that uh, not many people are watching. Uh, the most popular video I've had is about 250 people. So I'm not complaining, and I do hope uh, this is helpful. Uh, I would like to see more people watching. It would help to encourage me in these efforts. And uh, the one comment I did have, though, was positive. So. In that regard, I'm running a 100% positivity rate. Thank you.